this is Tara and Moana, and they are some artists having their exhibition in a local gallery here in Melbourne. And I'm going to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Sure, no problems. So, what is the benefit of collaborating between you two? Um, well, a benefit of collaborating is that sometimes we don't have strengths ourselves, so we can always work off a partner to kind of build our art practice. So, for example, I'm from a street art background, and Moana is a drawer and a printmaker. So when we work together, um, we draw on each other's skills to kind of build up our artwork and also, yeah, find resources. It also helps share the load of the work and we're able to fill larger spaces without as much stress or pressure when we're making the work. How did you turn visual arts from a hobby into a job? So we do have other jobs as well. Our arts practice, we've gone from strength to strength. So. We started with one exhibition. We didn't really have many plans beyond that. We just wanted to see how that would go. And then after we had a good response to the first one, we were able to take that and take it to other galleries and get better shows and keep going for the next few years. So yeah, in the last four years we've been working together, I think this exhibition here is our 14th. And we both also went to the same arts university. That's kind of where we met. That's yeah. so cool. So do you guys have any tips for any kids to create some artworks? My number one tip is make sure that you just start making art. It doesn't matter what you're making, what you do, just start making art. And once you start, just keep going and don't give up. Because a lot of the time when you do put the proposals through, when you put all this effort in, um, you might not always get accepted the first time. And you just have to keep going. And you've also just got to keep making work. Whatever you've made, make more. Because you're not going to go wrong doing that. You're just going to have to keep developing your practice. Don't sort of make one thing and think, oh, this is fantastic. If everyone loves this, I'll do more. Make more now. So do you guys usually go along with your plan or does your artwork change a lot? We change. All so, the time. <laughs> all the time. So when we have submitted a proposal, especially for, say, uh, we've been in an international arts festival, it was very important that the proposal we submitted was the work that we came out with. So for something like that, especially if people are paying you for a commission, when they're asking you to make something and you've agreed to make that, you do kind of have to make that. But with your shows that are your own show, and especially ones that are maybe in non-traditional spaces, you have a lot of freedom. So you can develop it and you can change it as you go. So for an example, some of these works around the gallery, are, they might have their third life, for example. So we'd start the work and then go, oh, we don't actually like that. It was better in our heads than on the board. And we'll wipe it back and we'll work over it again. And, yeah, you'll still be able to see some of the little images from past works in them, which is kind of exciting sometimes. That's really cool. So do you guys brainstorm or do you guys wait for ideas to come to you? We normally brainstorm. There's not very often that we don't have an idea that we're working on. Whether or not it's a good idea <laughs> is another issue. but. Most of the time, because there's two of us, it does make it a lot easier. One of us will come up with an idea and we're like, oh yeah, maybe not. And then we work on something else and the other one will bounce ideas off. Yeah. We just got to be honest with each other. If we don't like it, normally we'll tell each other, nah, this is how we should do it instead. Oh, that's so just it's a, a lot terrible of, idea. <laughs> it's a lot, of, a lot of give and take with yeah, your ideas because yeah, sometimes it's not the same as someone else. So how do you guys work together to make one creative vision? We normally work in stages. So we will say and start 10 works. I'll take five. Tara will take five. I'll work on some drawings. Tara will work on some backgrounds and colour schemes and pattern, and then we'll swap. So we can even use this one as an example. Yeah. Um, so this one here, um, I started off with a patterned background. So kind of, you can see the purple patterns in the back. And the um, lace behind that. Yeah, it's actually lace and placemats that you get from your $2 stores. They're the best thing to spray paint with to do backgrounds. So make, make the background and then I've got an animal silhouette here. At that stage then I passed it over to Moana who drew into the board and added the girl and the... Well, Tara did the stencil that's over the girl and then I drew back into it again. So we just work in stages over and over and then there are other times when we'll both be in the same place and we'll work on it together. So it depends on the board, the work and the idea. I really love this one. Thank you. Yeah. So what kind of artwork haven't you artwork that you haven't tried would you like to do? It's a good question. 
Well, we do have plans for new work. We'd like to go and do some printmaking work. and That's something that I haven't actually ever done before, so I'm quite excited. <laughs> Moana will have to talk me through it because she has done it before. Yeah, so there's sort of nothing that we sort of go, oh, this would be amazing, but we can't do that because most things, if you just work hard at it, you'll get there. And You build your own done, style along yeah, the way as well. Style. So we're, we've done some screen prints before, which is a type of printmaking. Next, we want to move on to some etched works. We use a lot of photography through our work that we then use through Photoshop or something like that. And yeah, there's, there's sort of nothing out of reach. You just have to plan. So who do you guys look up to and why? I've got a couple of artists that kind of really got me into the style that I am. Um, there's an artist called Ben Frost who does take a lot of um, popular culture images and incorporates them into his work. So I was strongly influenced by him through university. Yeah. Most of my influences haven't been much in drawing or the style of work that we make, but I find personally that I can look outside the medium that we use and get inspiration from artists who work in something else. So I find a lot of films and books, literature, things like that, very inspiring for our work, this sort of work. Even though I don't necessarily love some people who make work that looks like us. But street artists are always very inspiring, like the ones on the street. I'm very impressed with some of them, like Elk and guys like that, whose work is around Melbourne. So how long have you guys been wanting to do this for? Well, we kind of started at university. About four or five years ago, Moana wanted to fill a space in Mildura and she wasn't quite sure as it was the first one whether she could fill the space and come and approach me. So I didn't actually have any intentions whatsoever when I started my art degree that I wanted to exhibit. It was always just going to be my stepping stone to teaching. So she came to me and we, we put a show together. We filled a space with it was about 110 works scattered all through the gallery and on opening night we sold about 70% of them. So from that moment, <laughs> running really around, <laughs> putting those little coloured dots on, thinking that someone's actually putting their work in their house, that's when I went, okay, I want to keep doing this. This is fun. Yeah. So Whereas I, I had a very strong arts background my whole life. So I was always, I had exhibited before and I was always going to exhibit again. But it was just something that developed in my life that I always drew, I always made things. And I did start exhibiting very young. So for me, I just sort of, grabbed her and dragged her with me. <laughs> and I'm grateful, I really am. <laughs> Never thought we'd get here, but this is, yeah, this is cool. Anyone can do it. If we can do it, anyone can do it. Do you guys have your own favourite artwork that you guys have done? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I have one that we made, it was like, um, called Violin Girl. Um, it was exhibited in Adelaide. It was probably the biggest work we've ever done. It was a stencil that Moana drew and I had this crazy idea that I wanted to make it big. So it was uh, 120 centimetres by 180. And, and it, it was, was a stencil. <laughs> it was a stencil of one of her detailed drawings. So it was 20 hours sitting in the lounge room with a Stanley knife cutting this stencil. <laughs> and halfway through I thought it was crazy. But once we actually got that spray, it was, that's always been my favourite work. I've never freaked out so much in my life as pulling back that spray because we're only going to get one copy. <laughs> And if it didn't work, that was... That was it. That was 20 hours of my life gone. But yes, that was my favourite one. <laughs> yes. That is one of my favourite ones, just because of the amount of work that went into it and how exciting it was to see at the end. But I think my favourite ones, we did some screen prints that were very, not like us, they were very <laughs> clean, they were very white, they had very detailed lines. And they were very exciting because, I don't know, I just like living with them. Like, I've got a copy of each of them in my house and I just like living with them, so, yeah. Yeah, and there were family members that we actually took yeah. photographs for their bodies, yeah. so yeah. So there's lots of meaning for us in them, yeah. So are your paintings meant to try to teach someone or do you just create? Um, probably not the paintings as such, but we do try and um, teach our style to other people. We've done lots of workshops in Swan Hill with young artists and have taught them the process of doing the stencils and the multi-layered effects that we use. Um, and I also teach as well, so I'm starting to kind of teach the stencil art process and our kind of 
I call it, it's like a free process, really. It's, it's a fairly free process. Yeah, I try and teach that to the kids that nothing has to be perfect anymore. It doesn't have to be a drawing or a painting for it to be art. Like you can get take yes. a spray can and some pattern stencils and you can turn it into something. Yeah, whereas for me, a lot of the shows I've worked on, a lot of the background and the theory behind them. So I write a lot of our proposals and everything like that. So I normally, I do try to pull something out from our shows that leads to a deeper meaning behind the work. So they're pretty and they look nice on the wall, but you know, I like there to be something deeper within them, something that you can look for and something that gives them context. So you guys don't really have a set audience you have to like standardly make? It depends on the show. So some shows are either for a commercial audience, some have been a completely non-commercial work and completely unsaleable as well. So it depends on what the show is and why you've made it and who's going to be looking at it because every gallery has a different clientele clientele, and arts festivals aren't necessarily work for a commercial purpose as well so you have sort of have some more freedom in some shows and in others it's pretty specific you want to sell the work (laughs) so we try and when we do make work for a commercial gallery where we're going to sell it we try to kind of meet the needs of the audience so we've found that rabbits for example are really sellable like every rabbit that we seem to create yeah so it won't dominate the show but when we're putting a show together we do try to sometimes keep that in mind that maybe the bizarre image that we that we're having fun with is great but But. (laughs) we do need the show to balance (coughs) and people yeah something that someone will put on their wall well, sometimes we are pleasantly surprised by what people do yeah. purchase. And we do. We do make a lot of the work that we just want to make, but we just try to balance that in our shows. Yeah. That's so, oh, so cool. So do you guys have any tips for any kids if they want to create anything? Make work that you believe in. <laughs> so if you make work that you feel strongly about, and that you have researched and tried hard and you've just made made work that you believe in, then you're probably starting pretty well. And use things like social media to kind of um, reach an audience. That's kind of where we fell on our feet. We started up a Facebook page to start with, invited all of our friends, and it's kind of taken off from there. So you've just got to try and meet that audience and try Um, and get your work out there. And don't be afraid to put your your work work out out there. there. (laughs) Otherwise, no one will know you're doing it. Because... Sometimes you do put work out and you just sort of, you're not really sure about it until it's out there and then you see it on the walls and you go, wow, yeah, I'm really proud of this. So don't look at your work in your bedroom and think, oh, maybe it's not good enough, maybe it's not good enough. Take it out, get other people to look at it and get some feedback and then they might help you develop it. They might tell you, oh, you know, maybe you should move in this direction because these are your strengths and yeah, try to get feedback, try to be part of the community. Yeah. Because we did that for our first show. Yeah. So we bought our uni lecturers, we bought all of our work, we our hundred works that we had, we took them to the university and got our lecturers to look at it and they pitched through everything and, and told us what they liked and what they didn't like. And you just need someone that's honest. You need some critical feedback sometimes, even if it's not pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. No problems. Thank you for having mm-hmm. us.